everyone, it's me Kelly and today I'm coming at you with a painting of some gems. I'm outlining the gems with my Pilot Kakuno Extra Fine Nib Pen and I'm using my Waterproof Platinum Carbon Black Ink. Once I do that, I'm going to add some color. Now, if you do watercolor and you watch watercolor videos here on YouTube, you know that the hot thing right now is granulating colors in watercolor. And I've been wanting to experiment with them, uh, but I didn't really buy any new colors. I'm just using the granulating pigments that I already have. And I've been really inspired by some ads I've seen on Instagram for some bohemian style jewelry and they've taken natural gemstones and um, made cabochons of them and set them in a bezel setting and if you don't know what a cabochon is it's basically uh, flat on the bottom and it's not faceted and it's polished with the sort of dome side up and a bezel setting is kind of a tube that they form around the stone and it doesn't have any prongs but sometimes they do put these beautiful uh, beads of metal around the bezel and it's really pretty stunning and it goes along with the gems that have all different colors and textures that are kind of highlighted by that polished unfaceted type of polishing I don't know but they're really interesting and I thought they would lend themselves really well um, for experimenting with granulating pigments and just also just kind of playing with color and basically what I did was I just used a wet on wet technique and um, dropped in one color uh, inside of where the gem is and then I just added some other colors, just dropped them in around the edge, like a darker color around the edge, and um, just dropped in little granulating pigments in some of them. And once that was dry, I used a Posca paint marker and just added the shine because cabochon stones are smooth and shiny. Now I think it's kind of funny that they're showing me these ads because I never buy jewelry like that. Um, but I probably lingered too long on an ad that I saw because I thought that, you know, the stones were beautiful. Um, I'm always interested in stuff below the surface. And that's why these semi-precious, basically rocks in jewelry really fascinate me. I think they're really beautiful. Now, after the shine, I'm going to outline the bezels and the um, beading. Also, I have a little bit of news. Um, it's been a little while since I uploaded a video and I've been really busy with taxes, of course. Um, but something else really exciting happened. It happened pretty quickly. I connected with uh, Hawaii Fluid Art of Kansas City and it's a gallery and they also hold parties, painting parties, and they um, do paint pouring. Uh, soon they're also going to do silk screening and possibly batik, which that sounds really cool. But anyway, um, I had to learn how to frame art really fast. Like I had a week to get everything framed. So I took the three pieces that I felt were the most valuable. Um, one of which I took was the first neurographic piece that I did on YouTube. And then a really large mandala that I did and a watercolor color study that I did. So I took those up to Michael's to have them framed. Now I will say it was, oh my gosh, it was so expensive. It was twice as expensive as I really expected it to be. But I did use the um, non-reflective UV glass, which is really nice because you can stand right in front of it and you can barely tell that there's any glass there for the money that I spent. And I, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> the frames are worth at least as much as the art, the, the amount of money that I put into them, really, which is a little bit humbling. But um, it did teach me that I need 
to learn how to frame my own artwork because then I have control over the whole process. And um, anyway, and to go back to this painting, um, I'm using some Kramer pigments, um, which you have to buy directly from Kramer. You can't buy it uh, third party, um, but it's a metallic watercolor paint. And honestly, it's really nice, but it's very expensive. And I, I like the fine tech pretty well too, although this is really buttery and activates really quickly. Um, I'm not sure it's worth the money because in the end, I can't really depend on just the paint to give it the look of metal. Um, I ended up going back in with a pen and outlining everything. And, um, you know, so it's not just the paint. But I do think this Kramer metallic paint will be wonderful for other techniques that I've been kind of wanting to explore. And I'll put this in a new video. I'm working on some more stuff. And in the meantime, I'll tell you a little story about when my younger son and I went to pick up a frame that I bought um, on uh, Facebook Marketplace. And the lady was so nice and she handed us the frame and we paid her. And um, as we were driving home, you know, my son was looking at the print and he goes, this is really nice. And I said, I know it's really a shame because I'm just buying it for the frame. And here's this nice print. Um, fortunately, none of the, you know, secondhand artwork I'm getting is original artwork. It's all prints. But it did occur to me that someday somebody could be buying my artwork because they like the frame. And um, I would be very, well, I won't be around to care in 50 or 100 years, but um, yeah. So we got home and I told my husband about, you know, the sort of epiphany we had about just discarding the artwork inside the frames. And he was looking at the picture and he said, I kind of like that. Are you real attached to this frame? Can you replace it pretty easily? And I said, yeah, I, it's no problem, I guess. I like the size of it. It's a unique size. Um, but he sort of pilfered it from me and, and he's hanging it in his office. So <laughs> the artwork is not going to get discarded after all. Um, most of the other frames that I bought uh, secondhand were either didn't have any artwork in them or the artwork. One of them was like, um, like they cut out the picture of um, one of those puzzle boxes. I guess they liked the image of the puzzle <laughs> and they framed that. Now, I didn't have any qualms about throwing that out, but um it will pain me. I don't think I will buy and discard any original artwork. I just don't think I'd have the heart to do it. But back to this, I'm using a Uniball Micro Vision pen. It has waterproof ink and a nice fine point to it. And I wanted to try it out just in case. I like to know what my options are in using pens. And of course, I'll put in the description all the things that I've used today. And in the meantime, enjoy some creative time of your own. And um, if you enjoyed and liked this video, give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude. Thank you so much to everyone who has taken the time to watch my videos and subscribe. It means the world to me. So until next time, everyone, take care. Be well.